Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups, My Breeder Supply. Subscribe to us please, we'd really appreciate that. Go to our website, see our great products, look at our stud dogs, we'd really appreciate that. Okay, so today is a follow-up from the previous video about general poisoning in dogs and what to do. The very common one, chocolate poisoning. So how do you prevent it? What do you do if it diagnoses it? What do you do if your dog has swallowed, swallowed chocolate? Um, well, of course, the first thing is, is try to avoid the whole situation in the first place. Um, if you've got chocolate products, a can, a, you know, a baking can, pa pan full of uh, uh, brownies, I'm going to eat them all, so is the dog. Dogs like sweet things. The other thing about this is, if you give treats to your dogs, try not to give them sweet treats. Give them things more like carrots and things like that, and don't encourage them to get an appetite for sweet things. Okay, so... The danger is that a dog eats chocolate. Why is this dangerous? And why is it not dangerous to us as humans? The answer is, in humans, when you eat chocolate, there are two products, caffeine and uh, um, uh, theobromine, and both of those things can cause toxicity in humans. However, our liver gets rid of the toxins fast enough that typically you can't eat enough of it to ever get in trouble. With a dog, their liver is not set up to do that properly. And consequently, they can eat a decent amount of chocolate and start to get build up of these toxins in their blood that can then can cause seizures, convulsions, and death by um, cardiac arrest. Bad situation. What are the chances of that happening? It depends on the size of the dog, what kind of chocolate they ate, and how much of that chocolate they ate. So let's talk about the various different kinds of chocolates because they're very different in their toxic toxicity levels. So the very worst one is cocoa powder. And I'm gonna write here highest, this is in order of highest toxicity. So this is the one toxicity. This is the one that's bad news. What's after that? Baker's chocolate. These are both dark, bitter chocolates. Bad news. After that, it would be dark chocolate, the kind of stuff that you and I would like to eat, dark chocolate. After that, semi-sweet. Then after that, it would be uh, um, milk chocolate. And then after that, white chocolate. White chocolate, chocolata. So this is to the lowest. Okay, so it turns out there's not even any chocolate in that one there. That's not even an issue. That's not an issue. The more you go up the scale, the more dangerous it is. If your dog, you know, if a 30 pound dog ate a whole bar of dark, dark chocolate, that could be a very bad day. If a 30 pound dog ate a whole bar of milk chocolate, it'd probably be okay. So. And as you start going up the ladder, use cocoa powder. If you know the dog gets into a cabinet and there's a thing of cocoa powder, that is really some pretty strong stuff, and that really could be bad news. So the, the first thing to do is if you suspect that your dog has eaten chocolate, find out when you think it ate it, how much it ate, and what kind it was. You know, if there's a wrapper present, or if they got into a pan of, of uh, brownies, look and see how many brownies were consumed, get an idea about how much was consumed, and if possible, when it was consumed. So the next thing is, remember, I am not a vet. I am not a medical practitioner. I'm just a jerk doing stuff on videos. So anything that you see anywhere on the internet, always take it with a grain of salt. I always try to give out good information, but remember, I'm not a licensed practice veterinary. So any information you get from me, you use that at your own risk and not at mine. But what should you do next? Call the vet up. Call up animal, uh, animal poison control. Those are people out there who can take a phone call and give you an idea about what you should do. And this is what I think they're gonna recommend. And this is what you should do if you're in a situation where you can't get any help from anybody else. Let's get this stuff off the board and we'll talk about what to do. So. If a dog has swallowed something toxic, specifically we're talking about chocolate here, the first thing to do is to get out of his stomach. If you can get the dog to vomit within an hour or two of the consumption of the product, 
then you're going to get rid of a hell of a lot of the problem immediately. So, how do you do that? And it's not that difficult. So, so we want to induce vomiting. So first off, when do you not do that? You don't do that if you know that the dog has drunk something else like bleach, alkali, acid, petroleum products. You don't get a dog to vomit in those situations because they can cause problems as they come up. You don't get a dog to vomit if it's uh, in convulsions or it's unconscious. You, have a, you don't induce vomiting in a situation like that. You don't induce vomiting if the dog has swallowed a sharp object because it can tear up the esophagus on the way out. But if you know the dog has eaten chocolate, you induce vomiting. So if it's a small amount of chocolate, maybe you wait and see how the dog behaves. Remember, it takes two to eight hours to see the symptoms. This is not the dog eats the chocolate and it's down on the ground. That's not going to happen. Because what's happening is the, to the toxins have to be absorbed into the, into the blood and build up to cause the toxic level. It's not something that happens in five minutes. It's something that happens in 30 minutes to many hours. Okay, induce vomit, how do you do it? Well, the answer is, is you give one teaspoon, not tablespoon, one teaspoon of hydrogen peroxide, hydrogen peroxide. And by the way, that's gonna be a 5% version of it. <clears throat> hydrogen peroxide. So that's what you give per 10 pounds of body weight. And by the way, um, one teaspoon is about five mils or five cc's. So it's not a lot. So if you've got a 30 pound dog, you'd give 15 cc's or three teaspoons of hydrogen peroxide and then wait 15 minutes. If the dog puked, great. If it didn't puke, do it again, up to three times over a one hour period. That's it. Don't give any more than that. Don't go above, above that because it can have its own set of problems. So total of three times, one teaspoon for every 10 pounds of body weight, wait 15, 20 minutes, if a dog hasn't puked, repeat, do it up three times. That should make the dog puke. And so when should you not do this? Well, we already talked about not doing it if it's not something, you know, if it's chocolate, you shouldn't do this. If you're like three hours down the road, it's too late. You can't do any good three hours later. Why would you just not go ahead and make the dog, make the dog vomit anyway? There is a small problem, uh, issue of a dog possibly getting some of the vomitus into its lungs and getting aspiration pneumonia. So, you know, this is not something that, I mean, do you make yourself vomit? No, it's not something that is much fun and it's something that you only do on rare occasions. So don't, you know, be smart about this. If the dog's been, you know, six hours down the road since you know that they ate the chocolate, now it's starting to have tremors, convulsions, elevated heart rate, foaming at the mouth, it's time to go to the vet, don't muck around with this, it's time to, you pass the opportunity to do what we just suggested, vomiting, and also what I'm going to suggest next, and that is you give them activated charcoal, act, act, <laughs> activated, activated charcoal, so that is the thing, this is a mop-up agent, and you give five grams per 10 pounds of body weight, now, you could buy that in a powder. It's horrible stuff. It'll get everywhere. You'll have a hard time making your dog take it. Much better to get capsules. That you can get done. Uh, if you've got to use the powdered kind, I think a feeding tube and mix it up with some water. You don't want to give a dog a spoonful of powdered charcoal. It'll likely go in its lungs. It'll cough. It. It'll be all over the house. Don't do that. You've got to put this with a liquid to get it inside them, and you'll have a rough time if it's not a capsule. And backing up, by the way, to the hydrogen peroxide, how do you get the dog to take that? A turkey based or a syringe, side of the mouth, head tilted back, just slowly get it into their mouth and they'll, they'll, they'll drink it up. So what's the downside of doing this? Not much, it's really safe stuff. I mean, I think that any time that you induce vomiting and you've got some activated charcoal around, or you can run to Walmart and get some capsules, Go ahead and give some activated charcoal. I think the downside is very, very slight on this. Um, the, the, the only issue with the activated charcoal is to make sure you're not using a powdered kind that could potentially get into its lungs. That'd be a bad day. Okay, I think I've probably covered enough of this. 
Look, the one time of the year, by the way, for this to really be a problem is Christmas time. That's the time there's a lot of food around, a lot of chocolate around. The dog gets into a box, box of chocolates. These are the times of the year when you've got celebrations going on with a lot of people in the house and a lot of sweet things like chocolate being laying around where a dog absolutely can get into this. So if you give the, the dog an opportunity to eat some chocolate, it'll very likely take it. So try to avoid that by not leaving chocolate around in places that dogs might try to get to it. Um, and remember, the darker, the more bitter the chocolate is, the more dangerous it is. As you start going down the scale to the milk chocolates and even the white chocolates, the, the risk is not that great. So, and this is not a situation where you've got to like race like hell, drive at 100 miles an hour to get to a vet. It's not that kind of an emergency. This is something that the onset of problems will come on progressively 30 minutes to a few hours after the chocolate's been ingested. So if you've got a dog that starts to show some signs of chocolate toxicity after 30 minutes, that is a dog that's probably had a lot of chocolate. And that's a dog that definitely you need to either call your vet up or call your vet up, call animal poison control, and if necessary, take actions to make the dog vomit and the activated charcoal. And the majority of dogs that eat chocolate do not die from it. So most of the time it's okay. But when a dog has really got into a lot of dark chocolate, especially a small dog, that really is a dangerous situation, and those are the dogs that absolutely can get in trouble. Hope that helps. Um, subscribe to us, check out our products, and remember, be nice to your doggies, and don't let them eat chocolate. Bye, everybody.